How's it going? I'm Andy and welcome back to my living room where I like to take stuff like this and turn it into stuff like this. And this was supposed to be a short video, just a quick build using spray bottles. Yeah, I use them all the time. This part here especially is brilliant, all sorts of cool shapes from this. Uh, the pipe's brilliant on the inside, there's a tube run down the inside. All sorts of cool wee greeblies in here. But uh, not so much the bottle. So I thought it would be fun to try and make a mech just using the, the bottle. Uh, but you'll see when we get into it, it didn't turn out to be a quick video. So uh, yeah, let's get into it. Alrighty, so I've got my bottles here. You can see some of the shapes and patterns that they uh, already come on spray bottles. They're going to they're gonna work really well, I think. Uh, this white one, I think it's more of an organic look, so I'm going to see what I can do with that. Just marking where I'm going to cut here with some tape. I find it much easier to mark it out with tape instead of trying to do a straight line around the corner with a, with a pen and a pencil. And that's them all cut, and this is what I wanted. These are going to be my bodies. And like I said, I think the shapes on these are pretty cool. They're going to work out well. And I've put all the tops to one side. I'm going to use those for feet later. So put the bodies to one side there and just get the rest of the plastic marked out and ready to cut. Keep that handy, I've got an idea for that later. So I've got all my plastic cut, and the plan is that I'm going to use this to uh, fill out the forms. Basically make a cap for the top and the bottom, and fill out the body that way. But first, sand, 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 because this stuff doesn't want to stick to itself. So give everything a good sand first. And <laughs> I would normally make the mistake of sanding it after I cut it but uh, I was smart enough to know to sand it first and then just roughly marking out around the body it doesn't have to be perfect because I'll be trimming around it anyway so that's the top and bottom cut for that one I'll just get the rest cut out and get them all ready for gluing At this point my homemade glue doser is leaking so I'm gonna have to quickly get this glued up and get that patched up because I don't want to waste glue and I'll just use some PTFE to wrap around that I've already got a, a roll of it sitting out I'm gonna use it on the build anyway so I'll get this glue on quickly and uh, fix my glue doser Plenty of baking powder into those joints and then there was a wee gap there so we just put a bit more glue in just to fill that gap in. Okay, leak sorted, and I can get the rest of these glued up without my glue going everywhere. And that's everything now with a top and a bottom. And I just use my scissors now to trim off the excess. And then I'll take my standing knife and trim it some more 
and then hit it with some sandpaper especially on this one, I want this one to look pretty organic so I want those nice clean edges and then when it came to trimming this one, it actually came apart so it, 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 again it just shows you that this stuff really doesn't want to stick so took it all apart, cleaned up all the, the glue and gave it another really good sand and stuck it back together after a closer inspection it looks like it didn't even sand that bottom bit so my bad once all the tops and bottoms secured and I want to make like a faceplate thing for this guy I'll just get it roughly marked and get it cut so we have faceplate, cockpit area, windscreen I don't know, what do we want to call it So on the feet, so I was going to use the tops, so I'm just going to cut them all in half with my Dremel. I'll just get my holes marked here for the legs, and I'll mark my feet as well, and then just drill them all out at the same time. Drilling the holes in the feet there off center and slightly at an angle. I've got some aluminum, uh, aluminium armature wire here I'm going to use for the legs. I'm going to test fit it here first on the feet. And the idea is that these are going to come out the back of the body. I've got my legs bent, I'm just going to test fit everything together and see if he wants to stand. I have a feeling that he's he's not going to want to stand up. No, that feels okay. I'll maybe just have to glue a few bolts in his feet, make his feet a bit heavier, help him stand. And that's the legs glued in, feet glued in. Eh, still not really wanting to stand, odd centre of gravity. So I'm going to take some bolts and uh, glue them in here, make his feet a bit heavier. I really don't want to change his posture, I, I know, I, I think that this stance is quite good, so hopefully this will fix it. I added a detail there to the back of his leg, Just that's just some drinking straw cut up. And the bolts, that seem dried and it seems to have worked yet, he's standing much better. Still a wee bit unstable, but he stands. Uh, just at the point here where the legs go into the body, I've wrapped them in some PTFE, uh, just to tidy that up. And what do you know, it has affected the balance. So, I've stuck some more bolts in his feet, and that, that didn't really help. So, uh, yeah, the more this goes on, the more I'm not happy with these legs at all. I think I might change them. Quite like this guy, on the other hand. I think his stance is great. Uh, I think I've achieved that organic look. A wee bit of work to do on his feet, loads of bolts on his feet there to keep him upright, but he's standing. And tidied up there at the back with a PTFE again and some drinking straws. And this guy, not very stable, did the same thing with the PTFE and the drinking straws there, but he just doesn't want to stand. So, time to add a wee bit of detail. I'll get my bits box here, very important that. 
keep that to one side. I'm just going to grab a few things here, a few tops off some spray bottles, and some inner workings from spray bottles, tubes and things. And I've got a few wee plastic nubs here I'm going to use. Here's some wheels from a toy car. They're great hatch handles. And this is what I use for feet. Just a couple of pegs out of the pound shop. And they make great feet. But before I put those on, I made a few changes. I really wasn't happy with those spaghetti legs. So I had to make myself some spoon legs. I turned the, the aluminium spaghetti legs into exhausts and just put a couple of straw details on the top there and much more stable and a couple of washers glued to the bottom just for extra weight so much happier now and the big guy here just used slightly bigger plastic spoons for his legs and the big pegs for feet some washers there for extra weight and I think his old legs make way better exhausts I'll definitely be using this design again He just doesn't want to fall over. And then a few details on the top there, just from a spray bottle. That's just a pipe from, I think it's from a air freshener. And then that front bit there is from a spray tin. I had to try and stick with the organic look. I give this by like uh, frog feet. I think it works really well. And I've still got all this material left over. So I'm just going to look through it here and see if there's anything I can take from it. Any nice patterns or shapes, there's a couple of nice ones there. And I'll cut a few hatches, I always like to put hatches on, on my Max just for people to get in and out. Really like these corrugated panels. So I'm going to stick a couple on the side there and then maybe a couple on the top uh, like radiators, maybe some sort of cooling system for the engine anyway. And these are my toy car wheels. Uh, like I said, just trim off the tire and they make a great hatch handle. So just give it a quick sound here first and get all this shine off it. And then use a standing knife to trim off the outer tire and just leave the rim. And it's a great hatch handle. And just to try and round these edges a wee bit, I'm just going to singe it a wee bit with a lighter. Just kind of takes off those sharp edges and rolls it over a wee bit. This gets a bit of a mould line, so I'll just scrape that off with my standing knife, uh, front and back, and glue his hatch on. I just love these panels, they're going to look great when they're painted up. And I imagine, like I said, some sort of radiator that's keeping the engine cool. Just get a few more details on the legs here. This is wee plastic nubs. Don't know where I got them from, they were just in the junk drawer. Uh, get my hatch handles glued on. That means these people can get in and out. Just another detail here before I start to rivet. I'm going to put some pistons on the legs. So I'll take my cotton buds and my tube. This is a tube from inside a spray bottle. And Cut the tops off the buds, I'll keep those for something or other, and then cut some wee beads from the tube and make some pistons for the legs. Just 
just need to get them cut to size first, but yeah, something like that. And there we go. I think this is a great detail. I get it not only makes the legs stronger, but it makes them look stronger. Yeah, you know, and I like that. Just put it into place and hit it with some activator, which is great stuff. I would highly recommend the glue activator. And we're done, ready for riveting, and then we'll get them primed up and painted. Uh, for this guy, I just put rivets on the hatch hinges. I wanted to keep them nice and smooth. So, there we go, a not so quick video on how to use spray bottles for scratch building. I uh, hope this helps, and any questions or comments, you know where to go there, down below, work away, um, I'll always reply to comments. Uh, next video, next video will be episode 3 of Scratch Build Basics, which will be on bodies, um, I'll build a few bodies, and hopefully you can vote and pick one, and then in episode 4, I'll uh, build a full mech. Thanks very much for watching and I'll hopefully see you in the next one. Bye.